All right, we got Instagram, we got Instagram Live. Okay, so Facebook, Instagram, thank you for being here. My name is Alicia Cross. I am a personal trainer, a yoga teacher, and a wellness coach. And today, if you didn't know, is National Fitness Day. So I am celebrating with a workout that covers each of the six components of fitness. Hi Beth, thanks for being here. So we're gonna do, we're gonna go through a warm up, do a full body warm up, and then we'll go through each of the components. I will give you some exercises and drills for each of those, and we'll talk a little bit about it. And we will end with a warm up. So if you, well, no, we will end with a cool down and a stretch, which will tie in perfectly. Hey Anne, thanks for being here with one of the components, which is flexibility. So uh, let's see. You do need a broom. That is the only piece of equipment you need. So if you don't have a broom, go get a broom. Go get a broom. You need a broom for this workout. If you are here with me, say hi. Give me a wave so I know that you're here. Have your mat. Have water. So today is National Fitness Day, and we're celebrating with a workout, and we're going to cover all of the six components of fitness. I'll talk about the components. We'll do some exercises and some drills, and we'll get through a great workout. So get your mat, get your water, get a broom, maybe even a towel, you might sweat. And we're gonna make this work. Debbie's here, awesome, good. So we're gonna start with a full body warm up. So make sure you have some space. If you've been working out in your house, you know maybe it's tricky, you gotta move things around, you gotta watch out for furniture and ceiling fans. So get yourself some space and let's get warmed up. So start with some wrist circles. So we always start with a dynamic warm up. Circle those wrists in the opposite direction. So always moving, keeping the body moving. We don't do static stretches in the beginning. Um, this gets our body ready for the workout. And then you're gonna swing your arms open and close, right over left, left over right. And I'm just walking up on my toes, helping to get my ankles ready for the workout. So I hope you're here with me and you're doing this workout. You're ready to go, ready to get your workout in on this beautiful Saturday here in Northern Virginia. It is gorgeous. Who do we got here? Hi, Debbie. And then go ahead and swing those arms up and down. And this time I'm walking on my heels. So keep your arms really straight at the top. Try to touch the ceiling. So we're getting those shoulders warmed up and ready to work. And then you're gonna go back onto your toes and make big arm circles to the front. So the um, goal of our warm up is not to increase our range of motion. It's just to wake up the range of motion that we already have. And then heel walk and circle your arms to the back. Hey, Ann, I hope you're doing this workout with us. Good, swinging those arms to the back. And then you're gonna plant your feet and take your arms out to a T. Bend one elbow so your hands are up, so this is like a goal post, and then bend the other elbow so your hand is down, so that's like a scarecrow. And then alternate, so like you're turning a crank. Keep your elbows in line with your shoulders. Just keep turning those cranks. Good for the rotator cuff, good for the shoulder. Okay, and then relax your arms and swing one up, one down. So feel that motion challenging you to keep your core steady in the center. And then keep doing a few more of these or give me crazy eights, kind of like cow face arms in yoga. Again, great for the shoulders. Okay, perfect. Release that. Roll your shoulders to the front and then roll them to the back. And then keep your shoulders down and back. Let's give our necks some movement. So look to the right. So maybe your neck has been getting stiff. Look to the left. Maybe it's always been stiff. I think a lot of us are really prone to feeling pain in the neck, especially if we spend a lot of time on the computer or looking down at our phone. We might do, be doing more of that these days. Come on back to center, and then we're going to lean ear to shoulder. So keep your shoulders level. Make sure your shoulders aren't trying to help. You're gonna notice probably that one side's a little stickier than the other, that's fine. And then come on back to center when you're finished on both sides. And let's make um, a cat cow. So take your feet a little wider apart, arch your spine and look up, and then tuck, round, and scoop. Inhale, arching to look up. Exhale, tuck, round, and scoop. So get that spine moving, bend it in both directions. Arching and rounding. Inhale, arch, exhale, round. And then roll on up to the top and we're gonna twist it out. So twist, pivoting on your toe. So as I pivot, as I turn to look at this wall, I pivot on this toe. As I turn to look at this wall, I pivot on this toe. So that way your knee is happy. So get that rotation through your spine. If you wanna feel it less, you keep your arms in tight. If you wanna feel it more, swing those arms, a little more momentum into the twist. 
And then come on back to center and we're going to do side bends or lateral flexion. So you can bend side to side, keeping your arms down or you can take one arm up and over. Watch out for those ceiling fans. So whatever you're doing, make sure your feet stay equally and firmly planted into the floor. And then when you finish on both sides, come back to center, and we're gonna make hip circles. So put your hands on your hips and circle your hips around. And then reverse directions. It's like you're scraping all of the walls of this room that you're in. We're getting those joints lubricated and ready to work. And then come on back to center and we're going to do high knee pulls. So you're going to lift up one knee, squeeze it in, and then if you can, pop up on your toe. So lift, pull, and squeeze. Lift, pull, and squeeze. Good. Three, four, five, six, and six, five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna do butt kickers. So welcome everybody. So you can go fast or slow. If you're just joining, my name is Alicia Cross. I'm a personal trainer, a wellness coach, and a yoga teacher. And today is National Fitness Day. So we are doing a workout to celebrate. Welcome, welcome. And we're gonna do an exercise or a drill for all of the six components of fitness. And I'll talk to you about what those are. You'll see what's missing in your routine. And then come on uh, in front to hacky sacks. So swinging your foot up toward your opposite hand. So you don't want to bend over. It's not hand to foot, it's foot to hand. This is kind of like a uh, pigeon in yoga. It's a dynamic pigeon. And then we're going to do front kicks, toy soldiers. Arms out in front. Kick your foot toward your hand. Keep your spine nice and tall, your leg long, your kicking leg long, your standing leg long, waking up those hamstrings. And then lateral lunges. So take a nice wide stance on your mat. If you want to hold on to something, hold on. You can hold on to the couch, a chair, the wall, whatever you need. Or just place your hands on your thighs. If you can reach the floor, you can put your hands down on the floor. Just lunging side to side. So our, let's do one more warm up here so we get a little bit more into the upper body. Last one we're going to do is plank to down dog. Now this is going to be tricky trying to get all these things to see me. It's probably not going to happen. So just listen up. Let's see if I can take this one down. We're going down on the mat to do plank to down dog. So come on down onto your mat into a high plank and then push back into downward facing dog. Forward into plank, back into downward facing dog. And let's go for eight, seven, Six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, nice job. So now we should be warmed up and ready to go. Literally, our body temperature is a little higher. Our heart rate is probably up a little bit. That's exactly what we want. So grab a sip of water, and I'll tell you what's up first. Okay. So the first component of strength, the first component of fitness is strength. So strength is your ability to resist an external force, and that is a life skill. It will serve you in the gym and out in life. And we're gonna start that with some body weight squats. Oops. So stand with your feet about shoulder distance apart, slight turn out the toes, clasp your hands in the center, and we're going down and up for 12. So if your knees are talking to you, I want you to sit in a chair and stand up. Sit to stand. And um, I'll try to keep count. We'll call this four. So this is our leg strength, five. And this is the most functional movement we can make, six. There was an article, seven, in the Washington Post, eight, I think last week that a bunch of my clients shared with me, nine, and it said squats are the one exercise you need to be doing right now, 10, 11, last one, 12. Okay, and then we give our legs a chance to rest and we go on to upper body. So we're gonna do some push-ups and I'm gonna do my push-ups with my hands elevated on the couch. So that is a really great way that we could get some upper body strengthening without any equipment. So on your knees or toes, elevate your hands up or feel free to do it down on your mat and let's do 12 push-ups. So hands are wider than shoulder distance, down and up for 12, 11, 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So this is what we do. We superset lower and upper body. So your upper body has a chance to rest when your legs are working and vice versa. Thank you all. If you're joining, join me for this workout. We're back to legs. We're back to squats. So standing with your feet, uh, shoulder distance apart, slight turn on the toes, down and up for 12. So strength training needs to happen at least twice a week. Strength is your ability to resist an external force. So right now that force is body weight and our um, gravity. You don't have to have weights or machines or equipment or bands. It's helpful if you do, but if not, you get a great workout with just your body weight. Or be creative. What do you have that's heavy around your house? How can you make a heavy weight? By loading up a backpack or a duffel bag or a suitcase full of some big heavy uh, books, textbooks. And last one. So we give our legs a chance to rest. We do upper body. This is how I do my workouts. We superset upper and lower. So we're going back to push-ups. So elevate your hands on the couch or a chair, knees or toes, 12 push-ups. Here we go. So three sets of 12 is a great place to work. It's a great uh, rep and set and rep. Working on your strength, working on your endurance. And I'm on seven. How you doing? Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So today we're doing a workout for all six components of fitness. And you'll notice that there is some overlap. So when we move quickly like this from exercise to exercise, your heart rate gets up. You get a little winded, especially when you're yell talking through all the exercises. So you're also getting some cardio, uh, which is another one of the components, but don't worry, we'll get that later. And we're back to our last set of squats. So remember, we're doing three sets of 12. Feet, shoulder distance, slight turn out in the toes. You cup your hands in the center, down and up. If your knees don't love squats, I want you to sit in a chair and stand. Sit to stand 12 times. Exhale on the way up. Last three. Three, two, and one. We got last set of push-ups. Oh, thank you, Deborah. I know it's really hard to talk and count and do all of the things. And that's part of the fun of being in, uh, in a class or being in a group that I miss is somebody always counted. Somebody would always let us know when we were done. Now it's all on me. <laughs> Come on back to those push-ups. Elevate your hands if you'd like. Knees or toes. We got 12. Keeping that core nice and strong. Exhale as you push away. Exhale the hard part. Exhale, push. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Beautiful. So come on up. That was our first superset. So superset means pairing uh, two exercises together, going back and forth between those two. And in my workouts, I always superset upper and lower. Sometimes we'll do a triset. So maybe we'll have two leg exercises and then an upper body. Um, that lets one part rest while the other part works. And then we're not uh, sitting around, wasting time, waiting for our legs to recover. Thanks, Debbie. You're doing great too. Uh, so it's a way you can uh, maximize that, your time because we're all, we're all pressed for time. Even now, some of us are busier than ever. Hmm. So stay hydrated. Let's see. So next is power. Power is strength times speed. Strength times speed. So that strength, that ability to resist external forces multiplied by speed. And we're going to do that with some plyometrics and some jumps. And if you don't like plyos and jumps, don't worry. You're going to keep working on strength. I'll tell you what you're going to do. So we're going to do some plyometric lunges. So a lunge is one foot forward, one leg back, and we're gonna jump to the other side. And jump to the other side. So we're gonna try 16 to 20 of those alternating. And if you don't wanna do plyos, if you don't wanna jump, I want you to do stay with strength and keep doing alternating step back lunges. Same thing, 16 to 20. All right, so here we go. Get into that lunge stance, and we're gonna jump change, 16 to 20. All right, gang, here we go. 
four, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. And relax. Okay, so power is strength times speed. One of the ways we can work on that is with plyometrics and jumps, like jump squats, plyometric lunges. And like I said, we can't separate everything. So even when we are working on our power, you're working on your cardio, you feel it, your heart rate's up, you're breathless, I'm breathless. Hmm. If you had kettlebell, kettlebell swings, those would also be power. <sighs> catch your breath, catch your breath. We gotta recover, we got another set. So today we're doing a workout to celebrate National Fitness Day. We're doing exercises and drills for all six components of fitness. So we covered strength, and now we're on power. So power is strength times speed, and we are working on that today with plyometrics. So we're going back to our jump lunges, our plyometric lunges, plyo lunges. So lunge is one foot forward, one leg back, and we jump to the other side. We're gonna do 16, 16 to 20 of those, and if you're not jumping, if that doesn't work for you today, do alternating step back lunges. Okay, you ready? Second set, 16 to 20, here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, round two, nicely done. Catch your breath, walk around, shake out those legs. Whew. So power is, doesn't have to be a part of your routine, especially if your joints don't love it. You can always modify, taking out the impact. But it can definitely be a fun way to uh, get some cardio, so you don't always have to run. That's not, that's not the only way to get cardio. And it's a really nice challenge for your muscles. So in this quarantine that we're in, maybe you don't have access to all of your gym equipment, you have limited weights, limited equipment. Maybe you're getting tired of doing body weight squats or you know, that 10 pound dumbbell isn't cutting it anymore. So adding plyometrics like ply plyometric lunges, jump squats, that's a way where you can get a fun and challenging workout, again, with no extra equipment. All right, catch our breath. <sighs> okay, so we're gonna do one last set of those plyo lunges. If you are not doing plyometrics, just step back into the lunge. And if you're coming with me, we got it, let's do it. 20 of them, here we go gang. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, halfway, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Woo! Excellent set. Walk around, shake out your legs. You feel that, you feel that in your muscles, you're getting winded, so we're working on our cardio the same time we're working on this power. Whew. So once you catch your breath, hydrate, and I'm gonna tell you what's next. Okay. The next component that we're working on is SAQ, speed, agility, quickness. And speed is your ability to go fast, but you could be going from a jog into a sprint. Uh, quickness is the explosiveness, so going from a dead stop into a sprint. And agility is your ability to change directions quickly. So we're going to work on that today with some, let's start with um, shuffles. So we're just going to shuffle side to side. So if you have your mat, you might not be on your mat, you don't want to trip. So I'm just going to shuffle right behind my mat. And this is um, just traveling side to side in a shuffle. I'll show you some options. So again, we're gonna be getting our cardio while we're here. So we're gonna just side shuffle, right and left. And if this is more impact than you want today, let's take it back old school to a grapevine. Step behind, tap, step behind, tap. Just moving. This lateral movement is great because it's not something that we do during our daily lives, right? We move front to back, we walk front to back. So this is our side shuffle. And then, if we would like, we're gonna do skaters. So keep shuffling if you wanna shuffle. A skater will jump, try to jump the length of your back, 
pushing off and landing on one foot. So we're working on our agility, changing directions, and can you push off quick? Push off quick and land, push off quick and land. So that's that explosive power. Boom, boom, boom. And let's do 10 more. 10, nine, if you're shuffling, keep shuffling. Eight, seven, six, five, four. Keep trying to jump the length of your mat. Three, two, and one. Come back to center, shake out those legs, walk around, nicely done. So here's how we can use our broom, if you would like. I'll give you some options in case you don't like. Um, we're gonna hop over our broom. So if you lay your broom down on the floor, you're just gonna hop over it. And I can start with going one foot, so left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left. Or I can pick up two feet and hop and hop. So let's say you don't have a broom or you're worried you're gonna trip. You can just draw an imaginary line on the mat or you can hop on and off your mat. So using the edge of the mat as your line, but make sure that your mat isn't gonna slip out from under you when you jump on and off of it. And if you don't want the impact, it's step touch, step touch. So old school, step touch, step touch, or go back to those uh, shuffles or skaters if you like those better. And let's do 20. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Woo! So other ways that you could do SAQ drills are with an agility ladder. Uh, anything you do with the ladder, you could do just on the floor. We'll do some more of those. Okay, so push your broom off to the side. We're gonna go, imagine we have that agility ladder, imagine you have a square on the ground, and you're gonna go in, in, out, out. In, in, out, out. So we're gonna go right, left, right, left. So let's try that with our feet. So right foot in, left foot in, right foot out, left foot out. In, in, out, out. In, in, out, out. Maybe you wanna go faster. In, in, out, out, in, in, out, out. Keep it going. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, gotta wipe the slate clean, so now I'm gonna do that on the other side. So your left foot, so straddle that imaginary square on the ground, left foot in, right foot in, left foot out, right foot out. So it's in, in, out, out. In, in, maybe we wanna go faster. In, in, out, out, in, in, out, out. Let's do it. Good, fast feet, in and out. In, in, out, out, in, in, out, out. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Awesome, catch your breath. So the speed agility quickness, that's a way that you could add some fun cardio to your workout. Doing things like uh, sprint intervals, doing things like these agility drills, getting your heart rate up, and working on another one of those components of fitness. And this is whatever it looks like for you. So even if you're not going fast, maybe just working on that coordination of in, in, out, out. It's all gonna benefit you. Um, training your body. Oh, Donna's here, hey Donna. Training your body physically, also training your mind. So making those new pathways in your brain, learning new skills, working on your coordination. And all of that definitely helps with things like fall prevention and just how you move around in the world. So your training in the gym or in our living room gym now can, will, should benefit your life um, outside of your workouts. And these will definitely help with that. All right, let's grab a drink and see what we're up to next. So today is National Fitness Day. And if you are just joining me and we haven't met, my name is Alicia Cross. I am a personal trainer, a yoga teacher, and a wellness coach. Hmm. And to celebrate National Fitness Day, we are doing exercises and drills for all of the six components of fitness. So we covered strength, your ability to resist an external force. That force could be body weight, it could be gravity, it could be a machine, a band, a weight. Um, second, we did power, so that's strength times speed. So we did some plyometrics for that. Kettlebell training, kettlebell swings are also amazing for uh, power. If you can get your hands on a kettlebell, I'd highly recommend it. And we just did 
SAQ, speed, agility, quickness. And now, so even though we haven't had any shortage of cardio, we are moving into cardio respiratory fitness. That is the next component of our fitness. This is measured in VO2 max. So it's your body's ability to not only breathe in the oxygen, but then for all of your cells to absorb the oxygen. And that's what's really cool, I think, about um, the way exercise works is, you know, you're, you're doing it and you're making yourself tired, right? You're, get, you're exhausted. And then your body says, well, I don't like to be this tired. What changes can I make on a cellular level so I'm not so tired and for energy your body needs oxygen So it makes those changes in your cells so that you can take in more oxygen and Uptake more of the oxygen your cells can use it and then when you're not exercising That's why you have so much more energy throughout the day So this is how exercise works, right? Your heart rate gets up your blood pressure goes up your respiratory rate goes up But when you're not exercising all of those things go down so you get those benefits off of the, out of the gym, out of the living room gym that enhance your life. So cardio, cardio respiratory. Uh, this is your aerobic fitness and aerobic means with oxygen. So now we have to dial down the intensity and lengthen out the duration. Let me see if I can get a timer going on my watch here. So we'll do some drills. I'll give you some high and low in, um, impact options. Okay, here we go. So let's start with jumping jacks. Watch out for those ceiling bands. So if you want low impact, you just touch your toe out to the side. If you're going with high impact, get it up. All right, so we want these to be less intense than our uh, SAQ drills and our power drills because we're not, gonna, we're not gonna rest. We need that steady state cardio endurance to work on our aerobic capacity. You can also lower your arms. So getting your arms overhead increases your heart rate because your heart has to work really hard to pump the blood overhead. So you could do the low arms with high or low legs. So these are jumping jacks. Perfect, now let's take it into scissors. So front to back. And you could do this with heel taps to the front. Just keeping your body moving. Keep breathing, so we need that longer Interval, so we gotta dial down the intensity so we can maintain. Our heart rate is up, we're warm, we're sweating, we're working. Okay, let's jog it back, heels to your glutes. Low impact, just kick your heels up. You don't have to jump. Jogging in place, running on the spot. Butt kickers, heels to glutes, whatever you wanna call it, just keep moving. So our body needs to work with oxygen here. So we don't want to get so winded that we need to stop. So instead of hitting the wall, bring your intensity down and keep moving. We want that steady state. So we're working on our aerobic capacity, working with oxygen, our endurance. Okay, so now a um, little hop from side to side, like a boxer shuffle. Nice deep breaths, who we got? Yeah, Deborah. yep, so your um, low impact for this could be a step touch. So that little boxer bounce side to side. So if you had a jump rope, you could jump rope. That would be great cardio. So you don't have to run, does not have to be running. I've been doing some fun drills on my, my step bench and my BOSU, bringing back some, some of the old school stuff we used to do in the gym, I haven't done it in a while. It all works, it still works, it holds up. <laughs> Get that heart rate up. Hey, if you like dancing, you can do Zumba. There's plenty of videos online. You can turn on your favorite song and dance around your house. Let's go back to those jumping jacks, hit it. Getting your heart rate up, so the ASCM recommends 150 minutes of aerobic exercise per week. So however you wanna break that out, 30 minutes, five times a week, or longer, longer bouts, less frequently. Are you getting that? Are you getting enough cardio? Taking care of your heart, your lungs. Cardio is also great for managing stress and anxiety. 
You gotta burn off that energy. It's also great for focus. You have something big you gotta work on, go do some cardio first. Get that blood flowing to your brain. All right, we did it, three and a half minutes. All right, march it out so you don't stand still. Nice deep breaths, bringing that heart rate down. Okay, that was cardio. Oh good, next is balance. So balance, next component of fitness. So we covered, to review, we covered strength, power, SAQ, speed, agility, quickness. We just did cardio. So we did three and a half minutes of steady state cardio. So you can count that towards your 150 minutes this week. And next we're gonna do balance. Okay, so let's work on a couple different things. So balance is crucial, especially as we age. Uh, fall prevention is, uh, it should be high on your list of priorities. And you work on that with your strength training and with specific balance training exercises. So one drill that we're gonna work on right now, let me say this, if your balance is shaky, do this near a wall or hold on. We're gonna do tightrope walking. So just walk, just on an imaginary line on the floor, heel to toe, heel to toe, heel to toe. If that's challenging for you, that's all you need to keep practicing, tightrope walking, heel to toe. So if you want more of a challenge, you can do this with your eyes closed. Again, be mindful if you need to be near a wall. Um, hey, Paulita, if you need to be near a wall, hold on to a wall. Uh, if you wanna work on that challenge, close your eyes. Our balance comes from three systems. So our proprioceptors, so they, those are receptors in our tissues that sense where we are in space. Um, also our visual, ooh, so I really lose my balance when I close my eyes, so I'm really highly, highly reliant on my visual system. And it's also your vestibular, that's the third system of balance in your ears. And this is why sometimes when you have like sinus stuff going on, you can feel like your balance is challenged because you know your sinus, your ears, all those things are connected. So if you were doing your tightrope walking, relax. So that is uh, like dynamic balance, that's a moving balance. Another way that we could do a moving balance, and remember we talked about the um, different components, they cross over. So we're gonna do a, a single leg RDL. Um, you can think of this like a moving warrior three in yoga. So this is also a strength training move that I do a lot in my workouts. Your broom might come in handy for this one, and let me show you. So if you do not need to hold on to anything, you're gonna plant your right foot, your hands can go on your hips, and you'll tip forward parallel to the ground and stand up. So you're gonna do 10 to 12 on one side. Let's say you need a little help balancing. Grab your broom upside down and put the broom in the ground. Now make sure it's on your mat or on a rug so it doesn't um, slide. So if my, whatever leg is down on the floor, so my right leg is down, I'm gonna put the broom in my left hand. So then as I go forward into that warrior three, I can tip the, the broom forward and it's helping me to balance. Again, you wanna make sure it's not gonna slide. So put it on your mat, don't put it on a bare floor if the rug is slippery. And it's just helping you, right? If, you're, if your balance is really shaky, you gotta work on some other drills before you get to this one. One of the ways you could do that is by um, catching yourself maybe on the couch. So you tip forward, catch yourself, get your balance, and then stand back up. So find the thing that allows you to not just repeatedly train your body to fall over. All right, we're going to go on to the other side now. So you're, you are standing on your right leg, now stand on your left leg. What do you need to make this more or less challenging so that you are successful? If you want it to be harder, you can move your hands up behind your head. So you're moving the weight up higher away from that pivot point, so it gets a little bit more intense. If you need assistance, a little bit of assistance, hold that broom in your right hand, so the broom can tip forward as you tip forward. That'll give you some help. If you need more assistance, plant your foot, catch yourself on something. So here I'm going for the arm of the couch, then get your balance and then stand up. So notice that the crown of the head to the back foot, they move in one line. So you're not bending over, kicking the leg, um, you're not putting the leg down and then standing up. It's all happening in one piece. All right, so one leg had a chance to rest. Let's go back to the first leg. 
So plant your right foot, give me another set of 10 to 12 reps on this side. It's really important that we do single leg work in our uh, strengthening routine, in any routine, because if we do have a dominant side, and we all have a do dominant side, if you're always doing exercises on two feet, that strong leg will always be picking up the slack for the weak leg. So this is where you can work on weaknesses, whether that's strength or balance. And this is really nice the way we put this after our cardio, this is allowing our heart rate to come down a little bit, letting us come down the other side of the intensity ladder. And I'm not sure what number we're on, but let's do some on the other side. So plant your left foot, tipping forward. So this is another one where you could, again, you're working on two things. We're working on strength and we're working on balance. And strength is your ability to resist external forces. Right now that force is gravity and your body weight. You could make this more challenging with weights, with bands. And remember, be creative. If you're limited by your equipment that's at home, could you make a heavy weight by loading up a backpack, a duffel bag, a suitcase with some heavy books? Is there something around your house that's heavy that you could hold on to? Be creative right now so that we're challenging ourselves, not only taking care of our physical health, but that's also how we take care of our mental and emotional well-being with exercise. And especially the way that we've been doing, I've been offering online trainings, and it's nice. We get a group, maybe two to six people, just depending on the day, and you get to see, you get to see people again. So it's been very therapeutic. And hey, if you're not you're not feeling it, you're not feeling that workout, I'm guiding you, I'm leading you. All right, come on back to center. So we also work on balance in yoga, of course, with our standing poses. So let's work on that now. Get, get a chair, or get near a wall if you need some help with that. So in my slow flow today, we worked on dancer pose, but let's, let's dial it down, make it a little bit more practical here, and we'll do tree pose today. So for tree pose, let's stand on our right foot and bring your left, foot to your calf. So if this is challenging for you, put your toes on the ground. Make that little kickstand. So this is still a balance challenge because you've gone from two feet to foot and a toe and you've narrowed your base of support. And that's what balance is, is your ability to maintain your center of gravity over a base of support. So we've made our base of support smaller. If you are bringing your foot up higher, just remember to bring it up above your knee, but uh, know that this isn't really a bigger balance challenge. Standing on one foot is the challenge. It's actually a little bit easier sometimes just to wedge your foot into your thigh. So don't feel like there's this level of a posture that you need to achieve. Think, think more about what your goals are. So if you are working on balance, toes on the ground will accomplish that. Now when we reach away from center, there's more things to manage. So we've increase the thing that we're trying to balance over our shrinking base of support. So moving those arms, moving the arms overhead, these are all ways that you can challenge your balance. Um, when things move, so you've been in yoga class and we let our branches sway with the breeze. Okay, now I have to counter that movement. I have to meet that in my core, in my ankle. So that's the way you could work on your balance. And then let's come back into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Plant those feet. And then for the second side. So shift your weight into your left foot and bring your right foot against your calf. So if this is more of a challenge than you need today, bring your toes to the ground, right? You don't wanna train yourself to fall over. You wanna train yourself to be balanced, to stand up. So it's better to uh, modify, to lessen the degree of the intensity and be successful in the pose. So if you like to bring your foot up above your knee, uh, know that sometimes that's a little bit easier, right? You just kind of wedge your foot in there. It doesn't really change the balance because it's our base of support is still the same, one foot. And then when we reach out from our center line, the thing that we're balancing becomes bigger. It's more of a challenge. Reaching up overhead, that always seems to do it. And then maybe we add that movement, like our branches are swaying in the breeze. And then, I didn't even mention it, but hey, you could close your eyes. If I close my eyes, I will fall over. That's not, never been a strength of mine, a closed eye balance. And that's something you could even work on in mountain pose. So let's come back into Tadasana mountain pose. So feet hip distance in parallel, arms could be your, by your sides or eyes closed, or palms at your heart center. My 
mouth is working faster than my brain, you could close your eyes here. So even just standing on two feet in mountain pose with your eyes closed, that could be a balance challenge. Just allowing yourself to be where you're at so that you can make progress. And then let your eyes flutter open and grab a drink. Nice job. So let's, let's talk about uh, the last one. Well, let's review. So we worked on strength, two, power, three, speed, agility, and quickness, four, cardio, cardiorespiratory endurance, five, balance, and now we're on the last one, mobility and flexibility. Are they the same? They are not. So mobility is your ability to move safely and effectively through a range of motion. And here's where we're going to bring the broom back in. So grab your broom and hold it against your back. So ideally, we have three points of contact. Your head is one, your thoracic spine is two, and your sacrum is three. So you know what your head is, your thoracic spine. So ladies, this is kind of uh, around your sports bra. Um, guys, if you've ever worn a heart rate monitor around your chest, so basically your thoracic spine is where your ribs attach to your spine. And then that third point of contact is your sacrum. So that's the triangle-shaped bone at the bottom of your spine. It's kind of where the tag of your pants is or would be. So you have three points of contact and two spaces. So I have this nice big space for my neck, right? I can slide my whole hand in there. And then I have the space for my low back, my lumbar spine. So if you can see, I have my hand in there. This also makes a great place to hold the broom. So right at your, uh, your low back, your lumbar spine. So these are the natural curves that our spine makes. Your neck goes in, thoracic spine goes out, lumbar goes in, sacrum goes out. So once you get those three points of contact in two spaces, stand with your feet in mountain, Tadasana mountain pose, so hip distance. And from here, we're gonna do a hip hinge. So we're gonna hinge at the hips, knees are soft, until our, um, ideally until our back is parallel to the ground. But what you're focusing on is the three points of contact. So maintain that contact point, your head, your thoracic spine, and your sacrum. <coughs> and the two spaces. So it, that's another reason why it's really good to put your hand in there at your low back, because you don't want to smush that space. If you have issues with your upper body posture, you may not be able to get your head on the dowel. So that's one thing we gotta work on right there. So you're retracting your chin, head, chin parallel to the floor. So if you bend at your spine, either your head will come off of the dowel, or if you bend through your back, the dowel will come off your low back. So both of those are incorrect, not what we're going for here. So maintain the three points of contact as you hinge at your hips. So what are we, what are we looking at here? Your, your ability to maintain alignment through your spine and the mobility through your hamstrings. So can you keep your spine neutral as you flex at the hips? Your, your knees will need to bend. So this is different than flexibility. This is an active movement. This is not just about how tight you can squeeze your leg in when you're stretching. Can you move actively through a movement? Do you have the control, the awareness to maintain your alignment, to safely and effectively move through this range of motion. And there's a lot of different uh, exercises that we could do for this, but this is one that is something you can work on every single day. You wanna be able to move at your hips without giving up your spine. And this is true for all the movements we make. So even when we did our push-ups, when we did um, our squats, so you should be able to move through a squat move through a push-up with your spine in neutral, but this hip hinge with the dowel is a really great way to feel it and to start training that. So if this is challenging for you, do this every single day, hip hinges with the dowel. So that is a great example of mobility. So not just can you stretch, not just can you forward fold, but can you maintain your alignment throughout a motion. Now we end with flexibility. So flexibility is your ability to bend without breaking. That sounds important, right? So here's where, we're work, we'll, where we will work on stretching. That's how we will wrap up this workout today. All right, so let's start with some upper body stretches. So beautiful job today, everybody. Let's bring the right arm across the chest. So pressing gently on your forearm or your tricep. 
So we talked about all of the components of fitness, the six components of fitness. We're ending here with flexibility, getting a stretch. And then release that arm and bring the other arm across your chest. You can press on your forearm or your tricep. So nice gentle stretch at the end of our workout. This is important be for a couple reasons. So remember we talked about when we did the dynamic warm up in the beginning, I said we're not trying to increase our range of motion, we're just getting to the range of motion that we have. Now at the end of our workout, when we're nice and warm, now we're trying to increase our range of motion. Bring your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. Squeeze your hands tightly together and open up your chest. This is also where we continue to bring everything back down. So we were breathing heavy, our heart rate was up, we switched our body into fight or flight for that workout. We switched into sympathetic nervous system. And that is good for us. Stress is not what kills, it's chronic stress that kills. The stress that we get into in our workouts, that's therapeutic. That's like a little vaccine. We introduce our body to stress in a, health, in a healthy, controlled way, and we become more resilient. Release that. We're gonna bring our um, right arm up and over for a tricep stretch. So just like I talked about, you know, when you're working out, everything is up. Your heart rate is up, your blood pressure is up, your respiration is up, but then out of the workout, all those things come down, right? That's one of the ways you measure how healthy you are is by your resting heart rate. So same thing with this whole idea of stress and the nervous system. You, you turn everything up, turn up the dials on it when you're working out, you know, in a smart, uh, helpful way for your body. You don't want to burn yourself out and overdo it. Switch sides, and then you're going to be better at being down in that parasympathetic, the rest and digest state that we want to be in um, the majority of the time. So stretching is bringing everything down, it's helping us to get out of fight or flight so we can go um, eat our food, eat our post-workout meal, because what are the things that happen when we're in parasympathetic nervous system? Rest and digest, digestion. So if, our di if, our, if we're not in parasympathetic, we can't digest our food, we can't sleep at night, our immune system is compromised and then release. Let's do a cat stretch, so round your back. Just holding that rounded back stretch. Nice deep breaths, and this is why in yoga, I'm always, always, always reminding you to breathe through your nose, right? We were here, we were working out, we were panting, we were breathing out through the mouth, but then when we're not working out, nose breathing 100% of the time, nose breathing all day long, nose breathing in your yoga. And then roll up the spine, and we're gonna do a quadricep stretch. So find something to hold on to, the couch, a wall, or hey, maybe still working on your balance, maybe you can do that quadricep stretch without holding on to anything. And if you haven't finished your water bottle, make sure you finish that. So with all of my um, clients, I have a private Facebook group for my clients, and we're all doing ch weekly challenges in May, and our first challenge that's up this week is water. We're all drinking 100 ounces of water a day, and I've challenged everybody to get rid of um, the single-use water bottles, to get a reusable water bottle. So 100 ounces per day, make sure you're working on that. Finishing your water bottle in a workout is a great way to get that. Oh, I switched to the other side, if you didn't notice. <laughs> Second side, stretching out that quadricep, the front of the thigh, holding on if you need to hold on. Working on our flexibility, the last component. And then release that. We're gonna do a standing hip, uh, hamstring stretch. So dig your right heel into the ground, nice straight knee, and sit back into it. So just doing these standing stretches because I can't figure out how to get everything in view with the, the phone and the iPad. But any way you wanna stretch is amazing. And right now we're just doing kind of like a quick little stretch just to help us cool down. It's really great to have some longer stretches in your routine. We're going to switch sides. So dig the uh, left heel into the ground, that knee is straight. And that's what we work on in my Tuesday night stretch and de-stress. So we stay in those stretches longer. It's a very gentle, relaxing, yin-inspired practice. And then come on up, and we need to do a figure four stretch for our hip. So I encourage you to hold on to something, and then cross one ankle over opposite leg. You can also do this sitting down in a chair, sitting down on your couch, ankle over knee, so this stretches out our glutes and our hips. Uh, really good for everything we did today, the squats, the lunges, the plyometrics, 
Um, our, we work a lot in my workouts on strengthening glutes because this is where we want all of our power to come from. If our glutes are strong, our knees are happy, our back, our back is happy, a lot of issues can really be helped with strengthening glutes and core. We don't really talk about core too much today, but that would definitely be part of our strengthening routine. We're going to switch sides. Hold on if you need to, ankle over opposite leg, sit back in an imaginary chair, or sit down in a real chair and figure four, ankle over knee. Nice, slow, deep breaths in and out through the nose. So by now, our heart rate should be recovered. If you have your, um, tr your activity tracker, if it's, oops, monitoring your heart rate, it should be down, it should be recovered. Remember, the lower your heart rate is, the healthier you are. So average is in the 70s. If you're fit, it's in the 60s. If you're really fit, it's in the 50s. Athletes, 40s. So definitely monitor your resting heart rate. You should see improvements with that with your training. And it's a way to know if you are um, overtraining or you need a break. Your resting heart rate will be up in the morning. If you have not fully recovered from your workout. Beautiful. So come on up. So if you have any questions about anything I talked about today, the heart rate, the breathing, the water. Hey, Stephen. Um, the, any of the components, any of the... the um, movements that I talked about. If you have any questions, you can post them here in the comments. You can send me a message anytime. Yes, Debbie, we're always, we're always working on that breathing for you, getting that nose breathing. Uh, so if you have questions about anything that I talked about, um, Colby's here, yay. A anything, oh wow, and we have Melissa and Jose. Thank you guys so much for being here. Any questions about anything I did, just send me a message, post it in the comments. I would love to chat more with you about this. And it's National Fitness Day. Let's make every day National Fitness Day. So make sure you're getting that daily movement every day, not only for the health of your body. Uh, good, and I'm glad you got a workout. Great workout. But this is also how we keep our, um, our mind, our emotional and our mental well-being on point. And that matters now more than ever. So these workouts, uh, hey, if you're working for aesthetics and the way you look, that is great. That is awesome. But most of us, we just want to feel better. We want to feel less stress. We want to sleep better at night. And exercise, yoga, 100% are the ways that we do that. So make this a part of your daily routine. And if you have questions about how to incorporate that, send me a message anytime. And thank you all so much for be, being here. Happy Saturday. Happy National Fitness Day. Have a great weekend. And I hope to see you all again soon. Instagram going. Welcome and thanks for